our Earth is perfectly suited for life, as we know it. It orbits our sun at the Goldilocks distance, neither too hot nor too cold, just right for supporting large oceans of liquid water, the primordial soup that spawned everything living here today. And as we consider life elsewhere in the universe, it's usually assumed that life would only arise on similar planets with similar primordial soups to jumpstart evolution. And while that might be the most likely place to find life like us, it may severely limit the search and prevent us from finding the alien life right underneath our nose. Current NASA efforts to find life in our solar system are focused towards life as we know it, but they certainly haven't ruled out finding life in more exotic locations. In fact, in 2003, the NASA Ames Research Center published a paper entitled Searching for Alien Life Having Unearthly Biochemistry. Author Harry Jones makes a compelling case that we should explore all the potential abodes of life in the solar system, including those where life based on terrestrial biochemistry cannot exist. Life, as Jones puts it, might be found wherever there is free energy and a physical chemical system capable of using that energy to build living structures. On Earth, this is done with complex hydrocarbon chains arranging themselves to form semi-permeable membranes. Energy is converted to sugar by complex biochemical reactions, and that sugar is later burned to release that energy, doing work. Water and carbon are clearly the key here, but Carl Sagan reminds us that terrestrial biochemistry may not be the only possible biochemistry or even the best possible biochemistry. In searching for extraterrestrial life, an open mind is a prime asset. The NASA paper goes on to give some examples of alien worlds that might be home to exotic life. Worlds with oceans of ammonia, hydrocyanic acid, or methane. The whole paper is a very compelling read. It's linked below in the description. but. Based on what we know since 2003, when this paper was written, we need to add one more ecosystem where life might emerge. Liquid metal oceans. Life in an environment where liquid metal fills the seas may seem completely out there. Nothing we are familiar with can survive a plunge in a metal ocean, let alone a living life form. The possibility that Molten metal could harbor life hadn't even occurred to me until I saw a recent edition of the Science Channel's NASA Unexplained Files. The video made an interesting case for life born from liquid metal. But even still, I thought I would surely find reason to dismiss this notion after digging deeper into the science. But instead, I've only found evidence to suggest that this far out possibility may really be possible. The Science Channel's video is based on the work of Professor Lee Cronin. He has been able to create cell-like structures, semi-permeable membranes, out of metal. These metallic cells function much like carbon-based cells. Cronin is working on literally evolving these protocells, hoping to replicate more of biology with inorganic material. If successful, Cronin would be the creator of a new branch of life here on Earth. Metallic beings that store energy, reproduce, and evolve. But I wouldn't be too concerned about Cronin's metal life taking over. Evolution is normally a process that takes millions of years. But if life can arise from liquid metal oceans, there's been one below us for time immemorial, with literally billions more years than us to have evolved life. These depths of Earth are still mysterious to us. We get only vague, sporadic images of our Earth's insides when earthquakes rock the world. From this, we can tell some high-level characteristics. Cambridge professor San Kaltar tells us that Earth's outer core 
contains molten iron alloys that circulate at speeds similar to the ocean and is very turbulent. These liquid metal oceans deep within Earth are 500 times larger than all of the oceans on the surface of the Earth. I'll admit, the notion of completely different life forms lurking in the depths below still seems quite fantastical. But the more I dig, the more I find the concept credible. The missing piece to Cronin's metallic cells is the ability to store and release energy. And this is where I thought the thought experiment would break down. I didn't think that reversible chemical reactions like the ones that allow Earth life to store energy would be possible at such extreme temperatures. But chemistry continues even at these energy levels. A paper published in ACS Nano in 2020 details how reversible and repeatable chemical reactions of the same class that drives life, redox reactions, can occur within liquid metal. The paper even describes these rhythmic chemical interactions as similar to a heart beating. Now, taking a step back, it's odd to even think of liquid metal as a solvent. Can you have salty molten lava? Turns out, yes. Just like most liquids, you can dissolve things in liquid metal. In fact, that's what metallurgy is all about. Creating different solutions of metal, we call these metal alloys. Things like brass and steel are literally just frozen metal solutions. But metallurgy really only studies the frozen result. The high energy interactions of molten metal are hard to capture and not particularly relevant to most issues here on Earth. But that is beginning to change. The aforementioned paper in ACS Nano that detailed the redox reactions in liquid metal was titled Pulsing Liquid Alloys for Nanomaterial Synthesis. We're beginning to find use for these interesting molten metal interactions. But although it's now being studied, it's not likely we will stumble onto the biochemistry of liquid metal life in a lab just as you'd never stumble on the biochemistry of bacterial life by running chemistry experiments. The specifics of natural metallic life are likely unknowable unless we are able to observe them directly. But even if we were able to look right at a life form swimming in a bucket of liquid metal, would we even be able to identify it as life? or would it look just like interesting swirls of chemical reactions? NASA's paper on unearthly biochemistry gives us this answer. Instead of looking for familiar looking entities, we should instead look for signs of chemical imbalance. Deep in Earth's outer core, after billions of years, if there was no life to stir the pot, we'd expect things to even out we'd see chemical reactions taking place along natural curves in chemical equilibrium. If instead we see an abundance of chemicals that have no way of being there within our chemical framework, then we know there's some complex biochemistry going on. We'd have found exotic life. And despite these metal oceans being impossibly far below us, Recent efforts have started to give us clues towards the makeup of Earth's early liquid metal oceans. Clues that could show the chemical disequilibrium indicative of early metal life within our Earth. These clues lie locked within the oldest rocks found on Earth. Rocks dating over 4 billion years old. These volcanic rocks bear chemical hints of a time when much more of Earth was molten metal. If there is life down there, it would have just been getting started. Since then, the mantle, the source of the lava that we see shooting out of volcanoes, has cooled to an almost plastic-like consistency, with occasional pockets of more molten material. A far cry from the turbulent ocean conditions that still exist in the outer core. And we've only begun to find and study these traces from Earth's early past. And while the scientists involved 
certainly are not looking for signs of metal life. They might just find it. So I'll be keeping a close ear towards discoveries of unexplained chemical signatures from these projects. I'll also be keeping a close eye towards developments in observing UAP in our atmosphere. Chemical reactions happen faster as temperatures increase, and our own biological clocks and rhythms are based on these chemical reactions. So if there have been molten metal life forms evolving beneath us, they'd not only have had much longer to evolve, they'd likely have evolved at a much quicker pace. Perhaps life down below us has evolved intelligence. And perhaps that intelligence far exceeds our own. What we see as Tic Tacs and orbs might just be beings or objects from a world right below us, but still hidden from our view. It's certainly fun to consider. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I'll be bringing you updates on this issue and other un and underknown science theories on this channel, Rather Be Squidding. So be sure and subscribe if you haven't already. And thank you for watching.